Each and every month, hundreds of different tabletop, board, and card games appear on store shelves, launch on Kickstarter, and are dusted off of our game shelves to revisit our collective consciousness. And so, in this series, we track 10 of the games having the biggest momentum in website traffic, online discussion, sales, and news, all of which are factors that give these games momentum. Hey there! I'm Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise and Watch It Played, and before we get to this month's top games gaining growth, I want to let you know that this episode's been made possible in part by Unmatched Little Red Riding Hood vs. Beowulf from Restoration Games, which will have players seeing red. This latest standalone expansion for the tactical combat game features the legendary Scarlet Scamp facing off against the War King. Now, Little Red features a clever card combo mechanism, playing cards with icons that match the one in her basket, or her discard pile, triggering potent, powerful effects. But meanwhile, Beowulf here uses Rage to power up his cards for devastating attacks. As with all the unmatched sets, Little Red Riding Hood vs. Beowulf can be mixed and matched with other unmatched sets for all new legendary battles with famous fighters featuring fantastic asymmetrical attributes and abilities. Unmatched Little Red Riding Hood vs. Beowulf is available right now. Bing! There you go. You're welcome. You can get it direct from Restoration Games with it shipping in December, and it'll also be available in all retail outlets that you usually buy games from starting January 27th 2021. Follow the link in this video's description if you want to go order it right now from RestorationGames.com's website. Let's kick off this month's list with the upcoming fantasy fighting adventure game Nova Aetis Renaissance from Ludus Magnus Studio. This is a cooperative tactical board game set during the darkest timeline during the Italian Renaissance. In the game, the players partake as one of four young mercenaries who will each discover their fate during the war between Rome and Venice. Now, Each of the four heroes has a role to play on the battlefield and will be able to evolve by acquiring new classes, skills, and equipment. Nova Aetis Renaissance is a re-implementation of the original version of the game, which was founded on Kickstarter in January 2016. The publishers state that this new, improved version benefits from the experience that they've gained over the years since the original release, and is designed to give players a deeper experience by immersing them in a charming and mysterious Italy, one that's just chock full of historical characters, both imaginary and real, such as Leonardo and Raphael, Michelangelo, and Donatello. The game's design was also inspired by classic Japanese tactical RPGs such as Final Fantasy Tactics and Tactics Ogres, and includes a system by which enemies are controlled by the holy grail of programming, the ever-elusive Artificial Intelligence. Meanwhile, its opposite, Genuine Stupidity, continues to barely take any effort at all. Next up is the recent release that combines puzzles and animal breeding by designer Uwe Rosenberg, New York Zoo, in which players construct their very own animal park full of penguins, flamingos, and, possibly, adolescent genetically deformed amphibians. The gameplay in New York Zoo is straightforward. Each turn, players will have two options. Either puzzle a new enclosure tile into their zoo area, or gain new animals to populate the enclosures that they've already constructed. Easy? <laughs> no! Because players will also need to time their actions well to ensure an even distribution of genders so that their zoo can participate in as many animal breedings as possible. Because if you don't plan ahead, you're going to end up having just four male tortoises, and then your animal park's doomed, and you'll have to resort to something like introducing a new character like Venus in a last-ditch effort to extend your franchise's relevancy. And nobody wants that. So build animal enclosures, introduce new animals, and raise their offspring in New York Zoo. Beyond the Sun from Rio Grande Games is a space civilization game in which players collectively decide the technological progress of humankind at the dawn of the spacefaring era, all the time competing against each other to be the leading faction in economic development, science, and galactic influence. The game is played over a variable number of rounds, and as players take actions, they research new technologies that come in four different flavors. 
Thus, in each game, players will create their own unique technology trees. And these technologies are then used to increase their military strength, to reach intergalactic exoplanetary systems, to colonize those systems, to boost their resource production, to develop android tech that allows growth without population, train their Foot Clan soldiers, and more. Uh, I should confess that I, I have now exhausted all of my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle knowledge. Oh sure, yes, I contemplated spending several hours digging through Wikipedia for obscure Ninja Turtle references to sprinkle in throughout the rest of this episode, such as Half Court, the basketball playing mutant crime fighting giraffe, but no, no. I have too much self-respect to stoop to that level. Plus my internet went out. So we can now continue on to the next board game that's on this month's list, secure in the foreknowledge that not a single other Plastic Playmates personality will populate this presentation. The next game that's gaining steam this month is Tapestry, a card drafting, technology building, civilization game designed by Stonemeyer Games' very own Jamie Stegmeyer, who some may call the Domenico Gerlandio of modern board game design. I mean, <laughs> surely I'm not the only one who sees that. In Tapestry, players start from nothing. And then they make advances on four different tracks, science, technology, exploration, and military, to earn progressively better benefits. A player can focus on a specific track, or take a more balanced approach. But either way, they're going to need to improve their income, build their capital city, leverage asymmetrical abilities, gain tapestry cards, and earn victory points as they weave the story of their civilization. And then, once they're done, Maybe Pope Sixtus IV will summon them to Rome to paint a fresco in the Sistine Chapel. That's a Domenico reference. Like the, it's a callback. To, you get it. Create the civilization, having the most storied history, starting at the beginning of humankind and reaching into the future. Tapestry's first expansion, Plans and Ploys, was scheduled to reach retail outlets on October 30th. This expansion offers a variety of new civilizations, adds individual achievements to pursue, introduces landmarks for capital cities, and mixes in sneaky little ways to interact with the opposition. The next spot on this month's list is graced by The King's Dilemma, published by Horrible Guild. This is a game with an interactive narrative experience and legacy elements featuring several branching storylines which all lead to different possible finales. The game also features an evolving deck of event cards at its core, making this a game in which players represent the various houses leading the government of the King of Ankist. As members of the King's inner circle, the player's decisions determine how the story proceeds and the overall eventual fate of the kingdom. Now, each event happens only once, and players can discuss and bargain with each other before making their final decision, all of which culminating in progressing the game's story and possibly unlocking more events. Now, players will need to keep the kingdom going while also seeking advantages for their own house, and this power struggle may lead the kingdom into war, famine, or riot, or it could generate wealth and well-being. Sure, anything's possible. But in the end, it's the players themselves who hold the keys to the fate of the entire kingdom and the world. No, it's just, just the kingdom. That's, but it's a very large kingdom. It's like, it's big. It's at least, the, I don't know, one and a quarter size of a normal average kingdom. I don't, I'm not big on, on kingdom sizes. But, but it does have free Wi-Fi, so... You can go and you can look up more obscure toy facts for your YouTube videos that you make. For example, I discovered that in 1985, Palladium Books published a tabletop role-playing game based on the Ninja Turtles. Huh? It's cool. And it's not the first time at all that an established IP has made the jump over to analog gaming. Another example would be the game that's sponsoring the second half of today's episode, Kingdom Rush Rift in Time from Lucky Duck Games. Now, Kingdom Rush Rift in Time is a fully cooperative tower defense puzzler of epic proportions based on the award-winning computer game, which, personally speaking, is my personal favorite tower defense game of all time. Board or digital, I, I like it a lot. Yay for me. Rift in Time is chock full of individual scenarios, an infinite replayability mode, and a unique campaign in which each scenario is more challenging than the one before. 
introducing formidable foes, game-changing events, and epic bosses to battle, including the 80 millimeter tall Lord Blackburn. Command heroes, represented by four marvelous miniatures, and unleash a bevy of unique powers upon your opposition. By building and upgrading towers, placing plentiful polyomino pieces, and using their hero to attack enemies, players work together to hold back an ever-advancing horde of evil and nastiness. Also, the campaign map morphs as players progress throughout the story, making theirs truly a unique tale to tell. Kingdom Rush Rift in Time is available worldwide right now, so visit your local game store or follow the link in this video's description to get it directly from LuckyDuckGames.com as we speak. Actually, I recorded this a while ago, so as I have spoken. Mm, that rolls right off the tongue. Good, good job. Perfect ad-lib. Wonderful, wonderful job ad-libbing there. You, you saved it, right? Right at the end, you are a hero among men. In the game Aeon's End, the starving survivors of an ancient invasion have taken refuge in the forgotten underground city of Gravehold. And there, the desperate remnants of society have learned that the energy that's used by the very beings attacking them can be repurposed through various gems, transforming those energies into beneficial spells and weapons to aid their last line of defense, the Breach Mages. And yet, Nobody has thought to transform that energy into a bunch of sandwiches. Well, Aeon's End is a cooperative game that explores the deck building genre with a number of different mechanisms, including a variable turn order system that simulates the chaos of an attack, and deck management rules that require careful planning with every discarded card. Players will struggle to defend Gravehold, not only from a lack of thinly sliced deli meats, but also the Nameless and their hordes, using unique abilities, powerful spells, and most importantly of all, their collective wits. Aeon's End has produced a series of different Kickstarters for the base game and several expansions, and the latest one, Aeon's End Outcasts, has nearly wrapped up its shipping to its backers this past month. The Outcasts expansion introduces new mages, Nemeses, gems, relics, and spells, all of which are also backwards compatible with the previously published Aeon's Ends content. The game, Underwater Cities, saw a resurgence of momentum this month, making its way to the fourth spot on our list. In Underwater Cities, players represent the world's most powerful brain trust nominated to resolve the issue of Earth's overpopulation by establishing an intricate network of domed megacities on the ocean floor. Again, another problem that probably could have been solved simply with more sandwiches. The main principle of the game is card placement and utilization. Cards can be used to obtain raw materials, build and upgrade city domes, tunnels, and production buildings, such as farms, desalination devices, and laboratories, or allow a player to move their marker on the game's initiative track and other things. Each of the game's nearly 220 cards are divided into five types according to the way and time that they're used. And as a result, the game provides players with many different opportunities to achieve the victory points that they'll need to establish the best undersea civilization and walk away with a watery win. For the next entry in this month's list, I'm cheating. And I, I, but I don't mean like that time that I tricked an entire table into thinking that they'd score extra points in Call to Adventure by taking a photo of their cards. Quick, Rodney, take the game's picture before it gets away! No, no, this time I'm cheating by combining the three games in the West Kingdom series from Garfield Games, all of which appeared on this month's countdown, all together smooshed into a single entry here at number three. And unlike that Call to Adventure game, I think this time, this time the cheating will work. Now in the West Kingdom series is a trilogy of games that spans three years, starting with 2018's Architects of the West Kingdom, 2019's Paladins of the West Kingdom, and this year's Viscounts of the West Kingdom. In Architects, players compete to impress their king and maintain their noble status by constructing various landmarks throughout his newly appointed domain. And then, as noble men and women in paladins, players must gather workers from the city to defend against enemies, build fortifications, and spread faith throughout the land. And then, in Viscounts, players travel the land, looking to increase their influence among the various areas of society, with the game ending once the kingdom reaches poverty, prosperity, or perhaps both. 
And while that's a lot of games, I can't help but wonder if there may eventually be a fourth installment in the series. Perhaps a renaissance of the West Kingdom, in which you play as Tezion Vecellio, also known as Titian, one of the greatest Venetian artists of the 16th century. Known for his versatility, as he was equally adept at painting portraits and landscapes and mythological and religious figures, and... and... look. After exhausting my knowledge of Leonardo, Raphael, Michelangelo, and Donatello here, I was going to start referencing actual Renaissance artists, but I gotta be honest, I, I ran out of steam after name dropping Gerlandio back to tapestry, so I'm just gonna drop the whole thing. Which, which means, of course, that those three months of Art History Night classes I took in preparation of this were a total waste of time, but, but no, I think my artistic integrity speaks for itself when, when I say we should just move on. My artistic integrity. At number two, we have a resurgence of 2012's Robinson Crusoe Adventures on the Cursed Island from Portal Games, in which players find themselves stranded alone on a desert island that's filled with more peril than the cafeteria at Food Fight University on Double Sloppy Joe Day. In the game, players' castaway characters must build shelter, palisades and weapons, and create tools like axes and knives, find food, fight wild beasts, and protect themselves from the elements, everything that they can do to survive. Players will need to use not only their skills, but also their determination to coordinate with their teammates to develop plans and put them into practice. So debate, discuss, discover mysteries, and devise the best strategy together. One reason that new life has been breathed into Robinson Crusoe has been the two recently developed expansions for the game. 2020's Treasure Chest is a special box set that contains all the promos that have been released up to this point, and the upcoming Book of Adventures is an almanac containing new Robinson Crusoe scenarios in various levels of difficulty and complexity. Both of these add-ons are sure to lead to many new adventures on the island's sinister sands. And the game gaining the greatest ground this month is Aliens Bug Hunt from Upper Deck Entertainment. In Aliens Bug Hunt, a myriad of marines must complete their missions and evacuate various compromised complexes as heartless and hungry xenomorphs converge upon them from every direction. And if these aliens manage to overpower you, well then prepare for a fate even worse than that of 15th century Florentine artist Masaccio, whose scientific approach to perspective made an indelible mark on the Renaissance before his untimely death at the tender age of 26. Oh no! I can't turn it off. In the game, players will pick their favorite character from the movie Aliens, each with a unique ability. And every role is critical, as players will need to rely on each other to cover them and make it out alive. The complex consists of 30 different location tiles, which are rearranged in each assignment to create different challenges. Giovanni Bellini was another Italian painter of note. And there's the 10 games gaining momentum this month. And for more tabletop tutorials, countdowns, and profiles in Italian artistic enlightenment, check out the other videos posted on this channel. Until next time, I've been Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise, and watch it played, and take care.